Hey everyone, it's Mojax and it's January, so that means it's time for our annual recap of the highlights from the NAM trade show in California. In the internet age, trade shows in general seem to be becoming less relevant as time goes on, but NAM still remains the main show where manufacturers lay out their product plans for the year ahead, so it's always worth covering. My team didn't report any big new trends this time, apart from the continued growth of portabilism, but regular viewers will know we're already deep into that here at DJ City. Certainly, the likes of Jesse Dean Designs were getting a lot of attention, and it's great to see that portabilism is one market segment which hasn't been entirely taken over by the big brands at this point. Pioneer DJ did their usual thing of announcing all their new stuff in the weeks prior to the show, so there were no surprises from them, but they continue to push their record box DJ software in new directions. In upcoming versions, they have a plugin which will automatically generate lyric videos on the fly and support for a new hardware box, the RBDMX1 which connects to your computer and can feed custom light show information to a DMX lighting rig. That's not a new idea, SoundSwitch already does something very similar with Serato DJ, but it will be fascinating to see if the RB DMX1 will help to mainstream that type of technology. When it comes to hardware, their big new release is the DDJ1000, a big four-channel controller for Rekordbox DJ. The 1000 features full club-sized jog wheels with new displays in the centre, a full complement of pads and a central mixer section which will be immediately familiar to anyone used to DJ and mixers with hardware effects built in. Selling for around $1200, the 1000 is hitting stores now and looks to be a good choice for anyone after the feel of a CDJ and DJM setup on a tighter budget. Danish company Autophon are celebrating their 100th birthday in 2018 and have taken the opportunity to completely refresh their legendary Concorde series of cartridges. Redesigned entirely from the ground up, the Mark II range features a replaceable finger lift, more visibility around the stylus, and wider bodies for more stability. There are five new models in all, starting with the entry-level mix. The DJ is designed as an all-rounder, the Scratch model replaces the Qbert, the Digital is the new equivalent of the DigiTrack, and the Club model features an elliptical styly like the old Nightclub E. We've got the whole range on the way for review, so it will be interesting to see how they compare with the previous generation. One thing to note is that the company has committed to continue making styly for older models so your expensive carts haven't just become obsolete. Of course, NAM covers the whole music making industry as well as DJ stuff, and one announcement which caught my eye was the reveal of two budget monitors from Adam Audio. I know a lot of producers who swear by models like the A7X, but their line has traditionally been out of the price range of many producers and DJs. With the new T-Series available in 5 and 7 inch sizes, the company brings some of their trademark features like ribbon tweeters to a price point designed to compete with the likes of KRK Rockets. Definitely a line to watch. So we move on to the two biggest stories of the show. First up is one we expected, the first real hands-on demos of Rain's new 72 mixer and spinning platter 12 controller. There's not a whole lot new to say about this kit which hasn't been said already, the designs have been floating around for months, but it was still great to finally see real hardware being used and abused by lots of DJs in real life, albeit still with beta software at this point. It shouldn't be too long now before they hit the store shelves, and we'll be giving them a full review as soon as possible. And finally, there was one surprise product which made the whole DJ world sit up and pay attention, Phase. Coming from MWM, the company who created the Mix Fader, Phase consists of two wireless controllers which sit on top of regular records and send control data, speed and rotation, to a box which then translates that data to a control signal for Serato DJ or your DVS of choice. That means you bypass the turntable's internal audio altogether, so needles don't get worn out, and it should in theory work even in situations with crazy vibration, where regular control vinyl just doesn't cut it. For days, my social media feeds were full of videos of DJs waving records around in the air, which was really fun to see. It was only in prototype form at the show, and there are a lot of questions about the efficiency of the wireless tech in a club environment, latency, battery life, and a host of other things, but for a first demo of a product in the wild, it was seriously impressive. Predicted street price is in the region of $300 for the whole setup, which is equally impressive if they can pull that off. Overall, it's looking to be another interesting year in the DJ technology space. Lots of cool stuff from the big names, but it's always heartening to see a small company come along with something which really gets people excited. We'll be covering all the new gear right here on DJ City TV as the year goes on, so make sure you are subscribed for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.